He was supposed to be my success story, my protege. He was my little Mac in Mike Tyson's punch out. He was my Luke Skywalker and I was going to be his Yoda. Through the force, things you will see, other places, the future, the past, old friends long gone. He was my Daniel son and I was his Mr. Miyagi. Wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax, wax off. And we're not talking about the Jaden Smith Karate Kid. Attack me. See that? Feel that? I could break it. I'm choosing not to. Oh no, we're talking about the OG Ralph Macchio, Daniel LaRusso Karate Kid here. <laughs> but it didn't work out. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Why? Why? No! And since he wasn't my success story, it cost him $872,726. So what exactly did this kid do that cost him over $870,000? Well, we're gonna find that out and more right now. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel, Wealth Hacker Labs. This is the channel dedicated to teaching you new ways to grow wealth that is not taught to you in schools or by your parents. And yes, that is a mouthful. I am your gracious host, Jeff Rose. And so what exactly is going on here? What happened to where this young man, this adult made a decision that literally cost him at least $870,000, but in actuality, it probably cost him a whole lot more. And it was just a simple decision, a simple mistake that he made that I see a lot of people making, and chances are you are making the same exact mistake. So what all happened? How did this all break down? Several years ago, I used to speak at a local high school, and every time I would go there, I was trying to show these high school students how they could start investing, just to get familiar with the stock market and individual stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, et cetera, so that whenever they graduated and they went to college, ended up getting a job, that they had some understanding in the market so that they wouldn't wait too long to get started investing. Because I don't know what you're all waiting for me. All y'all procrastinating when it comes to investing. Like you need to start investing yesterday. So get on, get with it. Mm. But let's be honest, I'm speaking to high school students. Do you think they're really listening to me about some older guy talking about how it's important to invest for the future? I mean, most of these kids were like 17, 16 years old. I mean, they were probably in the back just snoozing away. <sighs> Is this guy done yet? I'm so bored. And typically that was the case. I knew that most of them weren't listening, but I, I just assumed that they absorbed a fraction of the information I was sharing with them, that that would lead them for success. But then it happened. Oh. After I got done speaking, one of the kids, one of the young men that was in this class came up to me and he wanted to start investing. And he was serious. He's like, man, I want, I want whatever you just talked about, I want to start doing it. But I really wanted to see if he was being truthful. Like, was he willing to put his money where his mouth was? Because many people are just about talk and they actually don't take action. So what I wanted to see if he was willing to come in. So I gave him my business card and I said, if you are serious, then come to my office and we'll talk more about it. And the cool thing was that he scheduled an appointment. He came into the office and I started showing him more about what I showed the other kids in class about investing. And I was talking mostly about mutual funds and he started investing $50 per month into a mutual fund. Like this was exciting. He was 18 years old. He was working part-time. I think he was working for some cell phone company in the mall, you know, making decent money as a high school kid. And he started investing $50 per month. And then it got even more exciting because six to nine months later, he increased it where he started investing $100 a month. And not too long after that, he got up to 150 and then 200 and then $250 per month. I mean, I think at this time he was between 19 or 20 years old and he is putting more money in than many adults that are 10 to 20 years older than him that actually are saving for their own retirement. Like this kid, this young man, has setting himself up to be a multi-millionaire. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. But why, why, why do they have to come to an end? I mean, come on, like Lost was my favorite TV show of all time. Like why did that have to come to an end? That show could have went on for several more seasons. 
<sighs> my apologies, I digress. So yeah, um, my protege, it came to an end. He stopped investing. I know, it's so sad. <laughs> So what happened? So he graduated high school, he was going to college, he was bounced around between jobs, really wasn't sure where he was going with his career. And on top of that, then the market started to move in different directions and it wasn't always moving up. So when he started seeing negatives and red on his statements, seeing losses, he couldn't stomach anymore, so he got scared. So he stopped investing. Say it ain't so. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that he made a $872,000 mistake. So where exactly did that come from? Well, I want to break down some of those numbers for you so you get an idea of how costly of a mistake this was. So if you go online and find any future value calculator, you can input these numbers yourself. So assuming that he started investing $50 a month at 18 years of age, did so for 12 years, so at the age of 30, and averaging 8% return on his money, he would have just over $12,000, about $12,025 and some change to be exact. Like that's just a small sampling of the power of compounding interest. But as you recall, in this example, he started off doing $50 a month and then he increased it to $100 a month, then 150, then 200. So I tried to represent what would that look like? So once again, we are assuming he's starting at age 18, starting at $50 a month, averaging 8% return. But the difference here is that he is increasing his monthly contribution by $50 each month for the next 12 years. So at the age of 30, assuming all of these factors, he has just over $73,000 saved. Like not bad for a 30 year old. And this is now where the $872,000 mistake happens. So I don't wanna assume that he's increasing his monthly contribution by $50 a month for the next 30 years. But let's just say that if he would have continued just doing $50 a month from the age of 30 all the way to the age of 60, and just adding on to the $73,000 that he had saved, by the time that he was 60 years of age, assuming an 8% return, he would have accumulated $872,726. Oh, but he stopped investing. But here we're just factoring an 8% return. Like what if he would have made 9% on his money? Now we're talking $1.16 million and it gets better or worse, however you wanna look at it. But assuming he would have averaged 10% return, now we're talking, $1.56 million. And we're just talking about adjusting the rate of return. If he would have added more per month, I mean, now we're talking millions and millions of dollars. Do you see how big this mistake is? There are four key takeaways that I want you to get from what I've just shared with the story. Number one is compound interest is magic, but you have to wait to let the magic happen. By him stopping at the age of 30, as we've already shown, like it's cost him at least $800,000, if not millions. Like it's magic as long as you allow the magic to happen. Key takeaway number two is that even subpar investments make money too. Some of you get all caught up in trying to choose the best investment or you wanna to try to pick apart some of the advice and like, well, how is he gonna average 8%? Like, no, everybody makes 8%. Okay, fine. If he would have made 6% return on his money, he still would have accumulated $489,000, so almost a half a million dollars at 6%. So the point is that whether you make 8%, 10%, or 6%, you still have to invest the money and you still have to let the magic happen with compound interest. Key takeaway number three is that what I haven't even mentioned yet is that this kid, this young man was investing into a Roth IRA. So that would have meant tax-free money. So $872,000 sounds pretty sweet. What about if it's completely tax free? And that's exactly what he was doing. And that's what you can do as well. If you don't know anything about the Roth IRA, check out my other video or talk about how to become a Roth IRA millionaire so that you can start investing and take advantage of tax free wealth. And key takeaway number four is scared money equals broke money. Oh, 
I tried to remind him that this is about investing for the long term, that even if he would have just cut back to $50 a month or $25, but just to stop investing altogether, like that is so heartbreaking. So when many of you are coming to me, coming to my channel and leaving comments about, you don't know how to start investing, you, you wanna get started, but you just don't know what to do yet, my heart's breaking for you because I just want you to start. I don't care where you start. I don't care if you go to Robinhood. I don't care if you go to M1 Finance. I don't care if you go to Edward Jones or your local bank. It doesn't matter as long as you start. I could go on for 15 more minutes about that, but I'm going to leave that right here. So this is the $872,000 mistake that cost this young man. Don't be that same mistake. Don't be that 800,000, 1.16 or $1.5 million mistake because you got scared, because you think that you're broke, because you don't know where to start, because you don't think you got enough money to get started investing. None of those things are true. You can start investing today. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have found any value, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.